country that certainly managed to successfully skirt the global slowdown so far is Indonesia. Domestic consumption is still strong. One of the main reasons behind the country's high growth rates, IMF chief Christine Lagarde also given Southeast Asia's biggest economy a vote of confidence, uh, saying it's solid. Foreign investment continuing to pour in, but analysts warn the country's new trade laws could hurt sentiment. Joining me now live for a first on CNBC interview is Gita Wayuman, Trade Minister of Indonesia. Minister, once again, it's really good to have you with us on the program. Thank you so much for joining us. I need to kick, kick off on a fairly controversial topic because, of course, you have had a, a lot of criticism when it comes to the, the new laws, the introduction of, of new rules. You have said recently in the press that you're prepared to suffer a drop in mining exports as a result of these uh, new regulations. Just how big a drop are you prepared, prepared to suffer? Well, I think the, the drop is, is not just by way of uh, volume, but it's also by way of prices which have declined in uh, recent months. Uh, but uh, what we did just a couple of months ago in terms of policy posture uh, is not inconsistent with the spirit of the mining law that we promulgated at the end of 2009. And that was to basically get everything within the mining uh, sector uh, as downstream as possible, as much as possible by the end of 2014. And when we took a pulse check uh, early part of this year, um, none of that was happening yet. So we're not, we're not prohibiting the exportation of minerals. Uh, we're imposing uh, tax on it. Uh, surely those that you know, have been uh, able to get this without you know, being imposed taxes, uh, I think are not as happy. But uh, we, we're, I think what we're trying to say is we're very serious about wanting to climb up the value chain. Uh, and I, I do believe that in the long run, I think this will, uh, will, will set the direction right for Indonesia. So you haven't necessarily seen a fall in foreign investment as yet. You know, a number of analysts we've spoken to uh, here on the program have said that that may be considered down the track. Because uh, I was wondering if you could address a number of issues uh, for me. There is uh, uh, some criticism that there's corruption in the system. There's some saying smelters can't be built in, in, in two years. That's just not enough time. Uh, you know, there's also talking about uh, a bureaucratic backlog. So there are clearly a number of issues still associated with the change in laws. How are you coping with all of this? I think that's, that's, that might be a fair comment to some extent. Uh, there is a, a bit of a dead weight in the system, but uh, I think clearly uh, the long-term investors have looked at Indonesia a lot more cleverly and proactively, and this is uh, substantiated by increasing numbers. Uh, we announced uh, you know, investment realizations just a few days ago for the second quarter. Again, uh, they grew by 30%. Uh, similar to what we experienced in the first quarter. Uh, this is a testament uh, to not only uh, our desire to climb up the value chain, but also uh, the investors around the world believing in the long-term story of Indonesia by way of how we've done uh, you know, our fiscal uh, stuff you know, very prudently in the last many years. And it has been applauded by the likes of Christine Lagarde. And we've been managing inflationary pressure uh, really effectively and efficiently last year and also the first semester of this year. Uh, low digit number, 3.79% last year and below 5% the first semester of this year. Uh, is it perfect? It's not perfect. But I think the question is uh, that lingers among people that want to do business with Indonesia, is Indonesia going to get better five to ten years from today? I think the answer is yes, and the numbers prove it. Uh, now, in terms of the backlog, uh, in terms of uh, the possibility of not being able to get the, uh, the smelters and the downstream activities completed by 2014, that may be a possibility, but I think what we want to see at the moment is that you know, a, a higher degree of proactivity in investing in the downstream side of the game. Uh, talking about the infrastructure uh, side of the equation, Minister, there are, there are also uh, uh, reportedly some issues with the potential for uh, Foxconn's investment in Indonesia uh, because of out-of-date infrastructure. I mean, is that something that you're working on uh, uh, testing now? Are you spending more money? Are you planning on spending more money on upgrading this infrastructure? We are. Uh, we're not going to fix everything by tomorrow. But uh, the, the good thing about Indonesia today is that we've got a, a lot of fiscal space. Our debt to GDP ratio is at 24 percent, and it's on a continuing declination. It'll be less than 20 percent in the next two to three years. So we've got a lot more money now to basically spend on not just the hard, but also the soft infrastructure. 
Uh, we've gotten the land law out uh, just a few months ago. This was pending for about 25 years, and very soon we'll be able to finalize the presidential decree, which will detail out the, 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 the details on the pricing mechanism and the other mechanisms needed for people to clear land so that we can build infrastructure better, faster. Uh, and I think this will happen in the next year or two, and you will see it, uh, and this will certainly support uh, the economy. Now, Foxconn, I, uh, you know, they've come to Indonesia. They've looked at it. This is a market of 250 million people, uh, most of which are, you know, belonging to the Jay-Z and the Justin Bieber generation, very youthful. Uh, they want to grow up, uh, you know, becoming smarter, and I think they see this as an opportunity at the rate that 60% of our GDP is related to domestic consumption. I, I can't see how anybody would not not be attracted to a market the size of Indonesia. And this is, you know, a $1.1 trillion economy already, and it's progressing at about, at about 6% the first two quarters of the year. Uh, I think they're, they're looking at it very seriously. Now, will they build a capacity that would employ more than a million people in one go? I don't think so. I think they'll progress it uh, at the same pace that we'll be able to provide the necessary f uh, infrastructure, both soft and hard. Okay, we do congratulate you uh, on the economic growth in the country. We, we appreciate your time. Thank you so much for Thanks, chatting Laura. to us once again.